Maestro Tiedemann, welcome to the Digital Concert Hall Interval Talk and thank you for taking the time to talk to us this evening. Pleasure. Now, of course, we should be talking about Brahms and Schoenberg and the deeper meaning of, of these wonderful pieces that we're playing tonight. But I wanted to start with some more personal things because you have a very special relationship to this orchestra. And I believe your debut here was not as a conductor, but as a cembalist in 1980, if I'm correct. Yes, I think it was in a Karajan Brandenburg, Bach, Bach Brandenburg concerto. And he used to have two harpsichords, you know, with one he was sitting to the, with the back to the public and the other one, and he would not play all the notes, as I remember. Mm. And he wanted the other partner to play everything because sometimes he would just conduct with his wonderful hands and then he needed some harpsichord notes too. And so, and he would look quite unamused when he was he noticed that something was not together or, or, or wrong and so but it was quite difficult to follow him because he was not really conducting he was making wonderful music with his hands and I was not used to this kind of um, music making and I had to look to the cello player <laughs> next to me and, and when he was playing then <laughs> Did I you have to too. watch his hands to see when he was playing and when he wasn't? Um, no, I couldn't because it was just behind, you know, where the keyboard is. But I noticed that very often he didn't. Oh. Um, no, yeah, that was my part. <laughs> that was your job. You were actually in the Carian Academy, which yeah. is the Berlin Philharmonic yeah. Academy for young students. And mm. um, you got into the academy as a viola player. Oh, yeah. I had an audition here. On this stage? On this stage. And Karian was sitting somewhere. And I think he was not very happy with my first playing and I think he said something like yeah you should learn to express more or whatever but I had technical problems and as it is the always and I mean problems. sometimes one, have, <laughs> one has technical problems and I, it was wonderful working then with Giusto Capone who was I don't know at a certain point he switched something switched around so light on or light off and the light went on and I knew how to do things I wanted to do. And I, I think he said in the beginning, I know that you have it, but there is something in between we have to cancel or we have to um, break. And then he broke the, the ice and uh, it was wonderful. And I was in the, in the, in the academy, I learned a lot because I mean, he, he was just such a wonderful player and a wonderful teacher. Giusto Caponi was a wonderful um, viola player and oh, also yeah. the father of our first violinist now, Alessandro Capone. And he told me a story of when you went to his house for a viola lesson yeah. and you were learning the Brahms sonata and at some yeah. point you said, oh, um, Professor Capone, why don't you play and I'll accompany you and you sat down at the yeah. piano and at that point uh, Professor Capone didn't know how good you were at the yeah, piano yeah. and you accompanied him. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yes, I did. Yeah, because I was, I played since I was four or five years old, I played the piano. And once, you know, when I was very young and too young, I thought I would be a pianist, but then I found out that organ was an instrument which was much more to my taste. And, and then I tried to teach myself the organ, which is, as you probably know, not easy <laughs> because you have all these pedals and, 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 and then different keyboards. and. So my piano teacher found out that something was wrong with my technique and, and or not so good anymore. And she asked me, do you, do you play the organ secretly? And I said, yes, I did that. And oh, I'm doing that. And she said, stop. And then I was very interested in a string instrument. And it turned out that as I have big hands, so the, the, the violin teacher said, why don't you try the viola? And I was immediately fascinated by the sound of the viola and I always thought it's very good to play two instruments. And then I thought if I cannot make the, a, a good organ player, be a good organ player, I thought it would be wonderful, yeah, which instrument has more colors than an organ? And that's an orchestra. And so I decided I think you should conduct just to get all these colors out of somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, so I tried to become a conductor. Tried to come, become a conductor, understatement of the year. Um, it must have been an incredible experience, though, to be, in, to, to be at the academy and be able to experience carry-on from yeah. the front and not, not from yeah. the back. What I, what I always 
I mean, I was later his assistant, uh, piano playing and watching him rehearsing. The disturbing thing was, or what I until now find really disturbing, that I didn't know how he got all these results because mm -hmm. I knew him working with him when he had already made made his big career and he had drawn out of the orchestra these wonderful colors by not doing it so has. much yeah. and that was something first you think <laughs> I can do that easily and then after a while you realize Probably I cannot do that easily because no one else can do it easily and other conductors are working so much on the podium and he doesn't do anything. So that is disturbing until now, not so much as, as one knows then at a certain point. It is the result of 20, 25 years of, of working with the same orchestra. Yeah, sure. And of sixty years of conducting presence on the on the on on stage, and I mean, if you see him, and I was then later conducting in Italy very often and watching TV and seeing Karian in very early um, TV recordings from La Scala and from other orchestras, so of the early fifties. And I mean, he, I didn't rec recognize him. I recognized his face and his his hair somehow, but the way he conducted was so different as that what I have experienced here. I think you're right, it must have been that this long collaboration in the yeah. end he just let the orchestras, like he let them drive themselves. They knew, themselves. they knew, and I mean that is that what I really learned from him, that one, the more you insist and you know your musicians and they know mm -hmm. you, then you know, with your eye or even without looking at them or, or one finger Indicates they already, <laughs> and they yeah, knew. They did. Yeah, but and that's yeah. that. What what is what's probably conducting about? Because yes. because beating is yeah. is boring. Yeah.